This is Shanghai, a mega city in China, with a population of 25 million and an administrative area of 6,340 square kilometers. The center of Shanghai is even more crowded than New York. However, here you will find the traffic is actually very organized and disordered at the same time. The complexity of the traffic here is just mind-blowing. And yet, the car we're gonna discuss today with help from Huawei, want to drive in the whole city fully autonomously. Yes, it's gonna be one hell of a challenge. I'm Harris, you're watching Mad EV. You probably know that an ADAS that works on the fast road is much easier to make than cities because the latter requires a much more powerful system. There's so many things to perceive on crowded urban roads, which is a big challenge for the sensing hardware, processing chip, and software algorithm. Regarding the sensory ability, this Huawei HI system is well developed. Apart from ordinary objects like people, cars, and obstacles, it can also recognize traffic lights, directional marking, turn waiting area, and turn signals of the braking light of the car in front, and sudden appear pedestrians. In addition, it can even recognize other creatures. <laughs> Still, there are some traffic elements that may confuse this system a bit. At least in my experience, some errors have occurred such as the inability to deal with the bus lane, tidal lanes, and no parking yellow grids. This actually won't trouble the operation of the ADAS, but may lead to some certain traffic violations. <laughs> Nevertheless, according to the engineers, more data will be added to further improve the accuracy using a high position map, which is actually a huge challenge for companies who want to build autonomous driving by themselves. And this is exactly the reason why the FSD cannot fully function in China, because Tesla is not allowed to collect a high position map data here. As for this car, the data was entirely collected by Huawei itself, so the accuracy and applicability are very high. There's another very important thing, which of course many cars have already done a good job on is displaying every close object the car senses on the dashboard clearly. I believe that this feature, while not affecting the performance in any way, has a significant impact on the driving experience. Because only if the driver is aware that the car can see what they can see, will they feel more at ease using the system. It not only has the ability to accelerate and decelerate appropriately, but also has a proper turning and lane changing logic that is essential when driving cities, which is also one of the reasons why I'm more than willing to use this system. All the steering movements are very smooth, and all lane changing decisions basically fit my own choices. Moreover, the aggressiveness of lane changing logic can be adjusted to suit different drivers with different habits. But there's still a few things that don't quite work for me. The first is that sometimes when changing lane or driving at intersections, it just gets a little bit too close to the vehicles next to me. And although it thinks the distance is safe, as someone who is not yet familiar with this system, I still got spooked and turned the steering wheel unconsciously. The second is that when cutting in line, the logic is very conservative which is normal from a safety standpoint. Although it's polite to the vehicle being cut, it can make the vehicle right behind me very impatient. But the situation can be handled by this feature. When you think it's safe to go, but the car doesn't, you can actually push the car to move by tapping the throttle. You probably heard things like this, just because you don't drive into others doesn't mean they won't drive into you. So obstacles avoidance is equally important when driving cities. The car handles well when facing vehicles and obstacles that slightly intrude into lanes, but it doesn't always make the right decision 
while dealing with vehicles along the cutting line, things that occupy half or even the entire lane, or pedestrians and non-motorized vehicles that move slowly on the road. From the latter two maneuvers, you can see that the system is very careful when facing pedestrians and non-motorized vehicles, which means that if you come across this car on the road that is using NCA, you can just bully it to make it stop. But of course, do it at your own risk. NCA Apart from the previous clips, we encountered two more interesting moments during a 20 km drive in the center of Shanghai. Since I don't know where these two clips should be placed in the previous three sections, I'll show them here. <laughs> if you measure it by the standards of a seasoned driver, it still falls a bit short. Otherwise, I won't have taken over the vehicle so many times. But from a customer's perspective, the usability of this system is pretty high. It drives smoother and even safer than at least 20% of the drivers on the road. It really can feel like it's being driven by a real person. And compared to the Tesla FSD's performance in North America, this system doesn't fall behind. Then there's only one question left. How much are you willing to pay for this kind of experience? The system is clearly priced because Agfox Alpha S has a version that does not have Huawei HI system on board. Taking away a difference in power, infotainment, and battery capacity, you are roughly paying 8 to 10 grand euro for it, which is basically the same price as the Tesla FSD in China. So, are you willing to make this choice? Let me know in the comment. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share with your friends. After all, your support is what drives us to keep on. Thank you for watching. See you next time.